This is breaking news from the Las Vegas Review Journal. Sponsored by Michael Gaughan's South Point Hotel, Casino, and Spa. Can you change? Well, if you go from the start, everybody dealt with COVID year. Uh, obviously, uh, that wasn't a very good year for us. The next year, uh, didn't have much success until the end of the season. Uh, and this year, we had success at the beginning of the season, but then we, we stalled out for <clears throat> six weeks uh, and had a very struggling game the other night against UNR. But, um, you know, just that full body of work uh, it does not see the trajectory of the program moving uh, to where we wanted to go, and that's winning championships. Eric, do you not acknowledge that the timing is a little bit odd with the painting of the cannon today and the firing of the coach? I understand your question. Uh, the, the, the painting of the cannon is about the tradition of UNLV. It's about the student athletes winning that cannon, and that's what our focus is today with the cannon is about the student athlete and about the tradition of UNLV when we win the cannon. Within that body of work you referenced, did you see a disconnect between the coach and the community, both on campus and in general? Was it hindering fundraising efforts and NIL efforts on the part of the school and, and other entities? No, I, I think the, the full body of work, uh, if you look at any program across the country, that it hinders, it, it, it you know, makes it tough. You know, just the, the fact that we're in Allegiant Stadium has been good from a season ticket sales perspective and, and those things, so that, that body of work does hinder. Uh, but is it the only thing that, that hinders uh, any of that? No, it's not, but it's I was also thinking part. in terms of his relationship with the high school football community here in town, his, his relationship with you. How was your relationship? Our, our relationship is good. Uh, the, as it relates to his relationship with high school coaches in, in, in the city of Las Vegas, I have not met with one high school coach in the city of Las Vegas. So how that relationship is, what's reported out is what's reported out, but I have not sat down with any high school coach to, to go through that. What are you going to be looking for uh, in the next head coach? <laughs> one, uh, want someone that's going to obviously continue our, 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 uh, our recent success academically, but someone that's, that, uh, you know, it's going to bring a championship mindset uh, to what we need to do. Uh, we want to get be better than we are today, and that that coach that comes in will have. Uh, you know, we hope that 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 per person has uh, you know head coaching experience. Uh, that is a big key. It's a learning curve, uh, but I think at the same time having someone that's going to be focusing on academics, focusing on winning championship, focusing on the student athlete experience at at such a level that we've never seen before. Do you think your own playing and career and experience will help you in terms of candidates and kind of the tree you came from? And, and yes, sir. I'll, I'll lean on that and lean on some, some, some of my mentors in, the, in, the, uh, in college athletics as well as uh, those that I've played for uh, as well and those that I've worked with. You know, So, yes, I will lean on that, that experience uh, as a former player and being on the staff at the University of Arizona as well. Uh, I'll lean on that. Did you, kind of, kind of following up on Steve's question a moment ago, did you kind of sense there was a disconnect between the coach and the community and some of the boosters that, that wanted to support this guy? You know, I, I, I haven't had anyone just walk up to me and say, you know, and I'm disconnected. Uh, but, you know, obviously we, we in Coach Arroyo's first year, we were sitting there looking at COVID, so nobody had a connection. Uh, and then last year there was still – with the fact that we had uh, mask only, uh, and some high schools and, and the CCSD couldn't get into to some some schools, uh, NCAA had recruiting restrictions as well. Uh, some people in the country didn't follow those recruiting restrictions, but uh, here we did. And you know, now moving forward uh, over this past year, uh, trying to get the program settled in uh, and winning. And again, we started out four and one, and then you know, for whatever reason, uh, we couldn't sustain that level of a but success. Marcus, Marcus is still in the building, you know, saying bye to staff and, and players. Was this news relayed to him recently this morning? Yeah, uh, Marcus and I met this morning. And then what kind of conversation, conversations did you have with him throughout the season? Uh, you know, we, we see each other on a regular basis. I'm at practice, you know, as you, you've seen me at practice on, on multiple occasions. Uh, but it, as, as I've said before, uh, anyone coaching Division One football, Division two, II, Division three does not matter. The ultimate goal is to win and win consistently. Uh, graduate student athletes, and, and you know, that's conversations that, that Marcus and I had. And, and if there's something I saw, by all means, I will not ever give a coach any any words on X's and O's or who to recruit or who to hire. Uh, but at the same time, it's about the experience of the student athlete.
Has the decision been made by the university whether or not to accept a bowl bid? Should it be offered this weekend? Uh, if it's offered, we will accept. Uh, and at this time, uh, we're going to have Kenwick Thompson as the interim coach. And uh, Kenwick has accepted that, that role. And he cares about our young, young people in this program. And he cares about uh, the institution. And he stepped up and said if that, that occurs and that happens, uh, we will accept that bid. And, and we will go with him as our interim head coach. Have you talked to the players about this happened? Yes. What was, did you get any feedback or reaction? Uh, not much feedback. I mean, I, I, I told the players that I've been there before. I've sat in the same chair that they sat in when a the, when the coaching change was made. And I had to, you know, stand up and move on to the next. You know, I'm here to, you know, I was there to get a degree. I got that degree. They're here to get a degree. Uh, those that want to transfer, sure they will. Uh, but uh, they were fine. They were, they were good. Uh, uh, I'm sure they'll have questions later. You know, it was probably a shock to them. So we'll move from there. Mm -hmm. You mentioned you mentioned the student focus, mm -hmm. student athlete focus. Coming in today, there was a rumbling of quote they killed the vibe for today's canon uh, painting. Was there a true focus and consideration for the players? Yes, there, there, there was a true and, and focus for the players. And at this time, you know, again, it's about the, the players and what the, the you know winning that cannon is all about, and painting it red. Uh, there's 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 these are tough. This is a tough decision, by all means. I didn't make this lightly. Um, but it's, it's about the, getting them to understand. It's more about their experience and what's going on as, as it relates to the vibe. You know, there's never a good time for these things to happen, uh, by all means. Um, when I was playing, it wasn't good. When I, when I was at the up previous institution, it wasn't good. There's no, there's no time that's better than the other. Did you make the decision yourself individually? It was the, the, the president had to be involved to some degree. What degree was President of the University involved? I I speak I speak with our president on a regular basis about everything. Uh, he he is there is not going to be ever a surprise to him. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, he entrusted me as the director of athletics at UNLV, and at the end of the day, decisions fall on me. And did I tell him absolutely one hundred percent? We had our conversation, uh, but I also rely on my strong support team, uh, my executive team, as well as my senior staff and our uh, sport administrator at Overseas Football. Uh, I take their feedback and at the end of the day, ultimately it's, it's going to be, it falls on me. What is the timetable for uh, hiring the next coach? We, we want to do it as soon as we possibly can. Uh, you know, who, who knows, it could be someone that's currently coaching in, in a bowl game or it could be someone that's preparing for some other championships as well. Uh, it could be someone that uh, you know, did not, that's not preparing for a bowl game, or but but have championship pedigree, and we'll just move along as fast as we can. Uh, we do understand that the transfer portal and the early signing period is coming up here shortly, uh, but at the same time, uh, it's important to get the right person uh, at the right time for this program to lead it with this building that you're standing in right now at $35 million, a $2 billion stadium over there. We've got, there's a lot of interest uh, across the board, and we're going to pick the best person possible for our program. Will the search firm be involved in the process at all? Uh, I don't anticipate you in the search firm at this time. What's the situation with the buyout? In what respect? So how, how much is the buyout? Uh, the buyout is 2.3. 2.3 3 million, yes. On one slot? No, paid out over the, the terms of the contract. Okay. You mentioned a desire to build a consistent winner here. That hasn't really been done in the program's history. What do you think? you can change or what, what do you think needs to change for that to happen? Consistency and support, consistency in the staff internally. Uh, there's been turnover at the athletic director's position. There's been turnover at the presidential position. Uh, there's been turnover in other areas of this department that, and we need to stop that turnover. That revolving door has to stop. And, and to do that, uh, we, we have to be in lockstep together at all times. Uh, and that's across the board, all of our sports. Our sports, one of the things I've been very proud of over the past year is, is our teams going out and supporting other teams. And that has been really, really special to see uh, volleyball supporting women's basketball, women's basketball supporting football, uh, track and field supporting golf, supporting soccer, men's and women's soccer. Seeing our student athletes, all the other contests that are not associated with their particular sport has been something really special. Uh, to see this year, and I think as a department to build that 
uh, and as the athletic director, uh, to be that, that part of that and lead this department to consistency as a driver. Eric, tell me why this will be your most important hire. <laughs> uh, it's because it's, obviously it's the biggest hire. Uh, and, and you look across the country, everybody says a football or a basketball hire is, is the most important. Well, right now, again, I just referenced these two facilities that we have the opportunity to, to practice in and compete in. And right now is a time for us to do that uh, at a level that we haven't seen consistently. And I think with the, with the right person here, uh, we can get that done. And this is going to be the biggest decision because it's my first gigantic decision that, that I'm going to have to have. With, with concern about realignment, do you all you all see this as an opportunity to make a move? Now is the time to make a move. You know, realignment. It's still up in the air with some things that are going to be going on. But uh, does it does it help in the process potentially? Who knows? Uh, but it you know that remains to be seen. Eric, will, he, will this guy be uh, the highest paid Mountain West coach, you think? Do you have the money for that? To make this, to bring in a legit guy that's going to be paid a lot? I mean, right now, uh, at 1.55, that, that sits number three in the conference right now. So we are competitive in the top three within our conference for a head football coach. So uh, with, our, with our donor base, uh, you know, through private funds, we'll, we'll be competitive with, you know, because there's, there's other jobs open right now. So we could be competing with, with other places. So we'll just keep functioning uh, in a way that uh, we're competitive in the, in the uh, salary range. Was that part of the timing of this decision that there are going to be other jobs available to just the jump start on No. I, I, I didn't know that, you know, Luke Fick will be going to Wisconsin. I didn't know uh, that job would be open. Didn't know Tulsa would be open. You know, I, don't, I can't sit around and focus on that because the right person at that job is not necessarily the right person for this job. So I got to focus on what's the right person for this job. Do you see the buyout impacting anything like this is the pool or the salaries that you can offer? No. Uh, no. I have a strong fundraising team and, and we're going to, we'll get the private funds that, that we need, that we have uh, to take care of what we need to do to get the best possible coaching staff here. Uh, not only from the head coach, you know, from the assistants and then the support staff as well. And whatever that, that head coach we hired, it comes in. It makes the decision on if he keeps anyone, that, that'll be completely up to him. Kirk, have there been, uh, has there been other uh, maybe ADs, coaches, uh, recruiting services that have contacted you in the last couple of days, given the attractiveness of this program perhaps now? Uh, it's constant. I mean, any of those search firms out there or other coaches that are trying to become head coaches, they don't wait until the last minutes, moments. They start you know, putting themselves out there early on. And we've, uh, you know, I, I, <laughs> I try not to spend a whole lot of time, uh, you know, can't focus in on that because, it, it, you know, we started this season. When I stepped into this seat, it was supporting Marcus, as I said in the press conference, lock, stop, locked in arms, and, and we're going forward. And be it what it may, uh, you know, we came to this decision today, so we move on. Can you describe his reaction? Uh, I think that's a question you need to ask him, you know, what his reaction was. I just have to I make the statements, and, and we have a conversation, and uh, we move on. Do you have a time frame you mm -hmm. want to work under to be able to have an announcement of a new head coach? You no, know, it'll depend on if, you know, if they're still currently coaching or not. You know, whether, I mean, my time frame would be, can we get it done before? We're not going to get it done before next week, don't get me wrong. Uh, but we're just going to make sure that we do our due diligence and make the right hire and make the right decision for our program and, and move forward and uh, let's start winning championships and, you know, move forward, taking care of our student athletes. Who is on your list for possible candidates? <laughs> <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll plead the fifth on that. <laughs> Anything else? All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So the cannon painting is on as scheduled. You've been watching breaking news from the Las Vegas Review-Journal, sponsored by Michael Gaughan's South Point Hotel, Casino, and Spa.